Greetings from Pumpkin Town Primitives. This is David Gillespie. This time we're down in Charleston, South Carolina at the Circular Congregational Church, my favorite church, my favorite cemetery at least, in the state of South Carolina. For those of you who don't know me, I've been carving gravestones for 20 years now with chisel and mallet only. No stencils, no templates, no computers, just chisel and mallet with hand-drawn letters. This cemetery is probably one of the greatest um, outdoor museums in the country. The oldest stone in this cemetery dates back to 1729, and there are hundreds of them from the 1740s, 50s, and 60s. Okay, so this is one of my favorite uh, stones that are carved in the uh, circular church. This one was carved by Henry M's of Boston. I know that because of different signed examples that exist here in this very cemetery. One thing that separates an M's stone from others is this stippled effect that he does around the borders. And uh, you see that on his very expensive stones, such as the one that you see here. Okay, another thing you'll notice is the portrait, which if you can zoom in on the portrait, the best thing about this one is the buttons and the wispy hair. The, uh, the fact that the slate has held up the detail of the buttons and these wisps of the hair since the year, if you can zoom in down here, 1749, that's 273 years of weathering. This city has seen the great earthquake of 1886. It has seen the Yankees shell in the city in the 1860s. The great fire of 1861. The British actually sent shells lobbed from their gunboats into this very cemetery in 1780 or 81. So I know this stone has not only had normal weathering effects, but also natural disasters as well as wars. So the fact that this portrait has held up over 273 years to show that type of detail to me speaks to the testimony that slate is a very good product and this is why I like to carve slate. Now also the stone itself is 27 inches wide and about 31 inches out of the ground and I think the modern conception is that the stone has to be very thick in order for it to be durable but just notice that this stone is only an inch and a quarter thick. So you'll see it's an inch and a quarter thick and it's 27 inches wide and this stone has stood still here for 273 years and it's still in good shape to be that old and that thin. Okay, so one way I know that it's a Henry M stone other than just the style itself is the lowercase g. M's is lowercase g's always curl at the bottom and have a flat part right here. That's the typical M's lowercase g's. When I see that, I know that it's Henry M's. I don't have to ask anyone. That's the only way I've ever seen anyone carve a g just like that. Okay, a lot of these uh, books that are out in the modern period that tell about the iconography and the, the meaning behind the symbols, you have to be careful because you see a lot of those books and one of the, several of those books in particular will talk about corn. If there's corn present on a gravestone, it means that this person died of a ripe old age. Well, this person here has corn present on his stone, but you can see he was 19 years old. Now, I know life expectancy wasn't what it is today, but 19 years, even in the colonial period, was not a ripe old age. So we have to look to other sources to understand what exactly does this corn icon mean. Okay, so another source that we can look to to understand better what this corn means, first of all, is when corn grows on a stalk, typically which way does it grow? It grows up, right? Well, you notice this corn isn't growing up, it's growing down. So that's telling us something, it's unnatural. Something unnatural has happened. So in the scriptures, in God's word, it says in John chapter 12, verse 24, verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat 
falls into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. So we see that this body of John Stanyarn has been sown as a seed into the ground so that it one day will bring forth fruit in eternal life. So this is a scriptural image that is shown here. It's not that he died of a ripe old age, but we can look to God's word, which even those who didn't believe back in those days would have been very well versed in scriptures. So these things would have meant something to somebody back in those days. And if you look down here at the bottom, I can't be sure, but these little things at the bottom could try to depict corn as the seed dropping into the ground to be sown up because we can't experience eternal life until we die. And so that's part of the iconography of this stone here for Mr. John Stanyard. Okay, another thing to take note of in this stone is if you look up close, you'll see the scribe lines where Henry Ems took his chisel and a straight edge and scribed these scratch lines so that he could keep his lettering straight. That scribe line on every line is still retained after 273 years. So I want that to sink in and on the stones that I carve. I also leave the scribe line as a testimony to the fact that a human did this and not some machine. Okay, and you also notice that the stipples are made with a little chisel, but they're flat and wide here and the chisel changes in these little spots. The chisel changes to smaller like gouge marks here. So he goes to a wider stroke here on the wider chisel, smaller chisel marks here. Notice the relief up top is much deeper and more interesting. And as he gets closer to the bottom, he knows that people aren't going to stoop down to see these elements. So he does ornament it, but he doesn't take as much time at the bottom. And as you increase up to the top, it gets a little bit deeper and a little more interesting. So for more information about the Stanyarn Stone and other slates here in Charleston or in the South in general, you want to check out my book, A Brief Treatise on Tomb and Gravestones of the 18th Century. A lot of the stones in this cemetery are in this book, but other cemeteries as well. So this is available in a link that I'll put in the description below.